Hello, Bonky. How are you? My name is Nogbonga Wawanyao, and I'm from Scottburg. My question to you is, having played overseas, what would be your advice to a netball player who has ambitions of playing uh, netball overseas? Thank you. Hi, Ms. Bonga. I am so glad I could answer your question today. Apologies for the delay, and um, yeah, I'll get straight into it. Uh, your question was, what would be my advice for a netball player that wants to play netball overseas? And mine is um, it's quite different. I'll start like this. I think for me, the very important thing is to start at home. So you literally really need to be very focused and dedicated and um, like literally switched on into everything that will make you the best player you can be, but at home, which means in your own club or your own district for that matter, listening to your coaches and giving them the respect and hoping uh, that they'll give you the guidance. Sometimes as athletes, we know what we want to achieve and uh, literally we bypass certain steps, which causes problem, problems later on. So if you then uh, follow through from your club to your districts, hopefully you get selected for your provincial team, represent your province, then hopefully you get to play TNL um, and then to the national side. The more you play competitively, the more chances for you to play um, or to get seen and then hopefully to get um, an offer to play overseas. But you really have to start at home and it's hard work and hard work from home until eventually you get to the top. So start at home. Hi, I'm Bruce Davidson from the BLD Group. We are specialists in media, public relations, sports management, entertainment and eventing. I have a question for Spa Proteas captain Bongi Masomi, very proud captain she is. But Bongi, this question is for you. The Spa Proteas are number five in the world. They've made incredible progress over the past few years. When, Bongi, are the Spa Proteas going to break into the top four of the world? Hi, Bruce. Um, your question was, when will the Spa Proteas break into the top four in the world? I really like the fact that you mentioned that we did really well last year at World Cup. But obviously, as everyone would know, it doesn't have to stop there or to end there. So um, looking at the performances from last year, one can be really positive about the progress that the Star Proteas have made uh, probably the past five years. When will, will the Star Proteas break into top four? Hopefully, it is now really soon, based on the fact that um, really the team did amazing but again to say this it takes a lot of hard work it's going to take a lot of effort and a lot of not just consistency but the build up now from the amount of work that has been done and um, I'm saying this being really helpful because a couple of um, girls already are playing overseas which really helped us if we think of the build up to the World Cup um, so looking forward to really just now getting back together when obviously the COVID-19 um, with the lockdown um, stops so that um, we can get a chance again to get together um, and work on obviously work from where we finished or where we ended. Again, um, it's, it's getting there. I hope it's really coming in um, like soon now. Uh, hopefully by the 2023 World Cup, we'll be talking a different story, which is quite exciting to think about. So let's see how it goes. Hi Bongi Wimsomi, my name is P. Wimsomkulu and my question is, what are some of the challenges that you have faced in your netball career and with those challenges being said, what is it that you are doing to ensure that those, come, those that come after you do not experience the same problems? And my other question is, what is it that keeps you going? What is it that keeps you moving despite of all the challenges that you face? I know that women do face yeah. lots of um, challenges in the sports in the sporting field. So I just wanted to know what is it that keeps you going? Thank you so, so much for all that you do for our country. Hi, Felicity. Um, your question was, what are the challenges that I faced in my netball career? And what am I doing to ensure that those coming after me don't face the same challenges. This is quite a tough question, but I actually like this because I obviously work with uh, kids either at work or uh, through my projects back home. Um, so it's quite exciting to have to answer this question. To start off, I'm going to start with um, a different one. Uh, for me, basically, it's education. I can remember myself, um, let's say, basically in grade 11, uh, starting netball, and at that time, I had really no idea of 
how important a grade 11 is in your in terms of applications to go to university after your grade 12 um, how important it is to start then not just even start then probably to start way back to build up to coming to grade 11 and getting better results so that you can be able to apply and then getting into grade 12 and taking it seriously while whilst you're playing sports i think for me it was more of um just knowing that I will probably pass, but not really putting in the effort. And I think at this time what I'm doing is, now that I work at UJ, um, obviously I have actually now to apply uh, to come into the university. And with that, there's a lot of obviously disappointment when athletes can't really get, um, you know, get into the university or can't be accepted because of their results. Uh, such great talent um, sometimes misses out because of that. Um, and I think that's uh, the more work that we can do, that I obviously do now, to try and educate um, our kids in terms of knowing exactly what's required uh, for you to balance your, uh, your studies and your netball, uh, and how this tool helps you into obviously getting into the university where you can be looked after um, and do both your netball, be like literally a student athletes. Um, not just, um, you know, academically only. And if I think of my grade 12, I wasn't really happy when I finished um, grade 12 with my results. Couldn't really do much about it. I was lucky to having to play uh, netball and could go see, um, you know, get guidance from the people that knew me in netball. I could write an entrance test, luckily, and I, like that I was able to do sport management. But from there, um, if I think back, I do. Re I did realize only after my matric how important it is really to do well in school, so you can get all these chances without having to go through so much worries. Um, lots of challenges. There's, if we can talk about having to struggle with, you know, buying your own playing shoes, you know, having uh, proper training gear, um, transport money back and forth either to trainings or traveling to tournaments. All of that. I know it's just issues that are always there. And that's every probably every athlete or most athletes have to go through, and I did go through all of that. And to be honest, I have to say I was lucky to have uh, such a mentor in Mr. Mabu, who is who literally is my mentor up to now. He was my first level coach, and he literally took everything into his hands to make sure that he supports me wherever he can, he could. So at this point, obviously, I did say I have my netball project, which is called Bonding Somi Netball, and in, in that project, I obviously try and, um, uh, you know, try and make sure that we support um, athletes specifically, in this case, we work with Hammersdale uh, netball players, and uh, we've affiliated them in the league in Kaiserin, just to make sure they are in a protective space and we can support them wherever we can. Uh, we try and make sure that transports back and forth uh, to tournaments, um, they don't have to pay and we look um, in, into who can support us in making sure that these kids get food when they at tournaments, they can get, go to trials, you know, they can have a play in kids, they can have a kit, you know, to go from home to the tournaments without having to pay any money because we know it's a struggle to get all of that. I can tell you a lot um, about this, but um, I do really enjoy what I do now and I know it does help and I know how important it is because it's actually built up of um, from just a young girl, if you're working with girls, into them being a professional athlete, which is what we're trying to achieve with the project. I hope this really answers your question. Hi, Bongiwe. My name is Nosi Po Makanya from Adams Mission. My question to you is what demotivates you in sport? Also, what demotivates you in life? And uh, how do you come out of both situations um, in order to be the person the successful person that you are thank you hi mr paul uh, your question was what demotivates me in sports and probably in life in general um <laughs> this is a tough question that i have to answer and to be honest i can't tell you what demotivates me because i think i don't know if i've learned this or it's just who i am if I focus on something and I really want to achieve something out of it, I can. I, I really choose to see only the positive out of every situation at that time. And I think with netball, because I really love netball and it's, it's just gave me direction in life. Um, so all that happens there, I always look at the positives. 
even if some challenges come through and there's a lot, a um, couple of times I will be challenged in terms of uh, probably what's happening around the space of netball. I always look at what can I do now to make it work. And because of that, then I can't be demotivated. Like I, I always say to the kids I work with, you kind of have to know what you want to achieve. And when you do that, know that there will be challenges and be happy with that because that will show you the direction. And I think I've really tried hard to only focus on, on the positives. And if challenges come, I look at what is it that's possible they can come up now out of those challenges. And you literally have to be challenged uh, to be a better person because then you learn out of that. So I think um, it, it's quite hard to really identify what could dem demotivate me. Probably in life as well, I live, I live by you know, the fact that I have to be challenged. If I am challenged, then I have to see the positive out of that. So I can't be demotivated. I hope it makes sense. I know it's kind of a bit awkward, but that's, that's, that's how I am. Hi, Bongiwe. Um, my name is Onja Chili from uh, Pushups in KwaZulu Natal. My question to you is, uh, since you have played netball like overseas, when comparing our South African netball league to other countries such as New Zealand, what do you think is the gap that needs to be closed so that our South African league reaches the same level as other other countries such as New Zealand. Um, this was the last question and it came from Jabulo. He asked me what is um, the gap between South Africa and other countries in Nepal and what do we need to do to close uh, the gap, literally to be in the same level as other countries. I think uh, for me what I've noticed obviously um, Overseas, they have a different uh, levels of, you know, playing leagues underneath their professional league, which means we here in South Africa, our highest league is Telcom Netball League, yeah. and under that, under that, we need to have um, different steps of the league, so that even if you didn't make, um, say, the Telcom Netball League, you at least have a certain league that you can play into. So we constantly have players. Um, that are fitting into uh, the Telcom Netball League and not just that, but also into the national um, level. I know we have national champs, but obviously that's a once-off tournament that happens. Again, that's where uh, national players get picked. But the more we can have um, steps to be followed, uh, players to play a lot more in different leagues, in different levels, up to getting to the top, I think we would literally have a, a, a pool of uh, players coming through which will consi consistently fit into the national side. Um, again, we will probably need to play Telcom Netball League for a longer period rather than um, probably a month or a month and a half. In saying this, the preparation for that will be literally have to be intense because if you play for, let's say, more than six months, it get really hard on your body and you have to prepare well for that, which will literally get uh, players at the national side or national level to be, you know, at their best fitness when they get picked uh, for the national side or for the spa proteas, they will be ready uh, to take on whatever task in front of them in terms of preparations um, for the bigger tournaments. Um, I think at this stage they are looking at that and making the league a little bit longer, which is quite exciting. Uh, that can be a, literally a big step and it's going to play a big role in ensuring that players are competing um, intensely and for a little bit longer period compared to what's happening. There's a lot more into it, but development is really quite important because that gives you an edge in terms of how many players are competing and uh, what's the step of, the steps of you know preparing and making sure that we're fitting into the high levels. We, can't, we cannot shy away the fact that obviously coaches will have to be prepared as well, so they have to be trained, um, not just coaches, umpires, and, and the more leagues we have out there, the more we will have to train our technical officials, if we can put it like that. But yeah, I think it's it's basic stuff that's uh, being looked into, so hopefully uh, it will be you know more implemented um, in the, the later stage, especially leading up into the World Cup in 2023.